Hi, this is Rob Hanley with the Durham Duplicate Bridge Club on Tuesday, October the 15th for the 499er game. We have two hands for you today. The first one is number one. Card is open to diamond and I have 22 points balanced. Am I going to slam? Absolutely. The only question I have is which slam? I could see six or seven diamonds, six or seven clubs, and six or seven no trump as possibilities. So whatever I choose to do here, I need it to leave the most options for my partner to describe their hand. So if I bid two diamonds inverted minor, uh, it's going to be about no trump only really, uh, possibly diamonds. If I jump to four no trump over one diamond, I'm never going to know if my partner has a balanced or unbalanced hand. So instead, I'm going to start with two clubs. And normally this would promise five or more clubs, and that would be my longest suit, and it would be forced into game. Well, obviously it's forced into game anyway, because we're playing two over one. Uh, but the advantage I get here is that it allows my partner to describe the distribution of their hand. Uh, so let's see how that goes. So if my partner had diamonds and a minimum unbalanced hand, they would have been two diamonds. If they bid two no trump, it shows a balanced hand, uh, which may or may not have a four card major. Obviously partner didn't raise clubs, so they don't have clubs. And because they bid hearts, that means they have diamonds and hearts. So the only thing I need to determine now is whether or not they have uh, a spade card or whether it's just diamonds and hearts. And I'm going to do that by bidding two spades. Now we play four suit forcing in this auction, even though we're in a game forcing auction with the two over one, because it, it, it allows my partner to pattern out. So partner didn't make a delayed raise in clubs, so they don't have three clubs. They're bidding two no trump because they have a spade stopper. So that's good news because that's probably going to be the king. They did not raise to three spades, so they don't have four spades. So now I'm pretty much sure that their distribution is three spades, four hearts, five diamonds, and one club. Again, they're unbalanced because they've been two hearts. So at this point, I want to find out about aces. And I'm going to do that by jumping to four clubs. This is Gerber. Uh, and partner is going to show me not key cards, but only aces. Now four spades shows two aces. I have two, so we're good to go so far. And now I want to find out about kings. So five clubs it is. Now I'm pretty sure my partner's got, got the king of spades, but let's see for sure. And there it is, showing me one king. So let's go through this. Partner has the king of spades, and I'm going to assume three of them for the unbalanced nature of the hand. That means we have three spade tricks. We have the ace and king of hearts. Now we're up to five. We have three clubs. That's eight. And partner has five diamonds. We have 13 tricks off the top. So it's seven, no trump. And strange lead of the diamond, but looking at the two hands, it looks as though we have five diamonds, three clubs, two hearts, and three spades for 13 tricks, just as anticipated. Whereas unblocking the ace and queen of spades. All right. At this point, I think we can see all the rest of the tricks. The king of spades is a winner. The ace of hearts is a winner. The Jack of Diamonds is a winner, followed by the Ace, the Queen, and the Ten. So I think I'm just going to clear, claim for Declarer here. Thirteen tricks with the exact distribution shown in the auction. Uh, so I think this auction actually highlights the advantage of not making an inverted minor and not jumping to four no trump, but taking it slow. When you have all the high card points, the opponents are unlikely to suddenly back into the auction and make it tricky for you. Uh, also, the lead by the robot is worth mentioning. They led a diamond. Uh, this is more common than you would think against a Grand Slam, where one of the hands has shown an unbalanced hand with a long suit. 
it's it's a passive lead. It's designed to lose what you're going to lose anyway, the diamonds, and uh, that way not finesse their partner. Uh, I still think it's somewhat dangerous on this hand because at no point did I actually raise diamonds. So I think it's it's it it could have been a bad lead. All right, uh, we're going to pause while we change directions for the next hand. All right, we're back, this time with hand number 16. Byron doesn't seem to want to open. Oh, there we go. Uh, one club with a one diamond overcall. So I have five spades and four hearts. Uh, I could overcall a spade, intending to show the hearts later. Uh, the danger is that I might not get to be able to show the hearts if I bid a spade first. Alternatively, I could make a negative double, uh, showing both majors. My personal preference is to bid one spade, but I certainly understand if you want to make a negative double. Wow, this auction got really complicated really fast. So um, the question on these kinds of auctions with a lot of competition is, who do I trust? And the answer is partner, always partner. So partner's three spade jump shows 14 to 16 high card points, four spades, an unbalanced hand, which generally is going to mean five clubs with a singleton or a void someplace. So it's an aggressive bid, it cuts the opponents out of the auction, and it's inviting me to game with what other, otherwise might seem to be marginal values. Now, I have two quick tricks with the two bullets. I have a singleton club, I have an extra trump. All of this is really pushing me to raise to four spades, so that's what I'm gonna do. Partner has excellent clubs and pretty good trump too. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to find that queen of spades because I'm gonna lose the first three diamonds. Now you'll notice that the south robot on my left is out of diamonds. So that means the north ro robot on my right started with six of them. And he's returned the Jack of Hearts. At this point, I sort of have to decide what I'm going to do with the spades. Um, just using simple fractions, there were six diamonds on my right and one on my left. That means there were 12 unknown cards that could hold the Queen of Spades on my left to seven on my right. So the odds are 12 to seven that any card I'm looking for is more probably going to be in the robot's hand on my left. Uh, there's no way based on the bidding to know for sure who might have it. Uh, so I'm going to go with the, that fraction. I'm going to win the ace here. I'm going to play the ace of spades from my side uh, in order to play through the robot on my left. And I'm going to play another spade on oh, the queen pop. So that solved that problem. At this point, all the trump are out, the ace, king, queen of clubs are all winners, and I can rough a club loser if I need to. I have lots of trump. There you go, all the trump are out, or all the clubs rather, and I'll just rough this for fun. Rough that. And I can just clean. So uh, a, a tight contract. It's nice to make those kind of things in competition. Uh, everybody kind of had their bid. Uh, partner definitely has theirs. The robot. I would overcall a diamond on my uh, with the North robot's hand every day of the week. And I like the two heart bid on my left by the South robot. So. Again, who do I trust? I trust my partner. And they had a great suit and a really nice 14 count. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks.